Good afternoon all. I'm having another little play with this uh, 6 times 120 farad supercapacitor module again because a lot of people said to me why didn't you put a DVM on an individual capacitor which I have now done to check when that capacitor uh, triggers the little protection circuit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch to see at what voltage the protection circuit kicks in. Now it should be around 2.7 but I discovered that the voltage that they kicked in was a bit higher than that so I'm expecting it to be a bit higher than that but not the first time around and there's a reason for that and that is that the little voltage detector chip this uh, well it's marked C73X is totally the wrong chip to do this job of supercapacitor protection I'll explain all in a moment but let's just see at what point that circuit triggers. Right, so this capacitor that we're looking at, which is this top right hand one, is uh, over 2.6 volts, it's approaching 2.7, and I've got a funny feeling that this blue light is going to come on, meaning the protection circuit has switched on, at exactly 2.7 volts. That's just a hunch, let's see if it happens. What I am interested to see is at what voltage it goes out again once these two resistors have been applied across the capacitor and its voltage is starting to fall back down. But let's just see if that one comes on top right when the capacitor voltage reaches 2.7. There's 2.7 and it hasn't come on. It's higher than that, so maybe my hunch is wrong, or maybe there's a bit of DVM inaccuracy here. I don't really know which it is. Now this was starting to trigger last time I did this at, I think the overall pack was about 16.6 and it should have been 16.2 but I felt that it triggered right so that one's gone but not this one this one's not triggered at 2.78 ah okay so it has triggered at 2.78 or thereabouts a little bit higher I think it was where's it going to go out it should go out actually at exactly 2.7 because that's what the chip's designed to do plus or minus the tolerance that was in the datasheet 2.67 it went out so that's 0.03 error now what voltage will that come back on Sorry, this is all a bit slow, but these things take time. Well, they're all triggering in and out now. But that chip says that it's laser trimmed for 2.7 volts, but it's not triggering at 2.7 volts. Two point seven eight. When will that one come on? Two point seven eight and a bit. Okay, so my hunch was wrong. I thought the first time round this would come on at about two point seven. It didn't, but it's still coming on way too high. Two point seven eight. So what's going on? Now I should say that this update video has come about because of a comment by Tangle Gear who says the hysteresis is only on the high side. The device is normally used the other way around. And after looking at the datasheet for a while, I realised that he's right. This device is not normally used to trigger something when a voltage reaches uh, 2.7 volts. It's designed to switch something off, or at least to signal a low when a voltage drops below 2.7 volts. It's actually almost like a brownout detector. If the supply voltage drops below 2.7,
it signals to your microprocessor, for example, that there's something wrong. Let's take another look at the data sheet. So this is a Torex XC61C series device, a standard voltage detector, because this one is at the voltage of 2.7 volts. Highly precise uh, using CMOS and laser trimming technologies. De uh, detect voltage is extremely accurate. And here it says highly accurate, plus or minus 2%, mm, well, but plus or minus 1% if you're within the standard voltage range of 2.6 to 5 volts. And we just about are, because we're at 2.7 volts. Now, one thing that kind of caught my eye when I looked at this the first time, but I didn't really twig what was going on, is the applications. Microprocessor reset circuitry, memory backup circuits, power on reset circuits, and power failure detection. So I think this is where this chip is normally used for power failure detection. If the power is failing and the voltage uh, VDD, VCC is dropping down, once it drops below 2.7 volts, this device indicates that and the microprocessor can do what it needs to do before the uh, voltage drops completely. It does say here system battery life and charge voltage monitors. So charge voltage monitors is a little bit like what we're trying to do here monitoring the voltage of a capacitor and making sure it doesn't go too high. But this device isn't designed to do that. So let's have a look at this operational explanation. It says when the input voltage, which is the voltage strapped across this device, rises above the detect voltage, now that's 2.7, the output voltage is equal to VIN, which just simply means it goes high and triggers our uh, protection circuit. Now number two says when the input voltage falls below the detect voltage, output voltage V out will be equal to the ground voltage. Now that doesn't sound like there's any hysteresis because above the detect voltage it goes high, below the detect voltage it goes low. There's a couple of uh, statements here about stability, but here's number five. When input voltage rises above the detect voltage, uh, sorry, the detect release voltage, VDR, now that's a different voltage. The output voltage will be equal to V in, in other words, it'll go high. Now you can see here that the detect release voltage, VDR, is a little bit higher than the detect voltage, VDF. Detect voltage is 2.7, the release voltage is higher than that, around 2.8. So that's the hysteresis, and it says here the difference between VDR and VDF represents the hysteresis range. But what didn't occur to me when I first looked at this diagram, because it didn't seem the right way around, was that the release voltage is higher than the detect voltage. So this statement number five, when the uh, voltage V in rises above the detect release voltage V out goes high, means that it's not going to happen at 2.7. It's going to happen higher than that. But, uh, well, how high? Well, here's the answer. The detect voltage VDF on this one is uh, 2.7. The hysteresis range is VDF times 0 0.05. Typically, it can be... Uh, 0.08 or it can be as little as 0.02 but uh, let's multiply VDF of 2.7 by 1.05 so that it includes uh, the 2.7 volts so 2.7 times 1.05 that gives 2.84 volts so that means that typically uh, the voltage that this thing triggers at will be the detect voltage 2.7 plus the hysteresis, hysteresis range of 0.05, 2.84 volts, not 2.7. Now we can see how this works from the block diagram. It's a bit easier to see what's going on in this open drain version, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this one. When V in drops below the detect voltage, 2.7 volts, the positive of this comparator will go below V ref, and so the output will go low. On the other side, this will go high. Now that will turn on these two MOSFETs, this one to indicate to the microcontroller that V in has dropped below 2.7 volts. And this one shorts out this resistor. Now that will pull the positive of the comparator a little bit further down still, so that when V in starts to rise back up, it will take correspondingly longer for the comparator to signal that V in has raised above the threshold. And so that won't be 2.7 volts. That'll be this higher voltage of about 2.84. That's how the hysteresis in this circuit works. And it means that the hysteresis voltage, this release voltage, is above the detect voltage. Totally inappropriate for this circuit. 
So this little voltage detector chip, uh, this one marked C73X, the 7 meaning 2.7 volts, is designed to protect circuits against going under 2.7 volts, not to protect circuits against going over 2.7 volts. Because when you add in the hysteresis, it goes way over 2.7, it goes to about 2.84. So this is bad design. They've used a chip here that's intended to be used for a different application to do something it was never intended to do. And as a result, it doesn't work. And these capacitors are routinely taken way above their maximum 2.7 volts. And that makes me even more nervous of this module. So these protection circuits really don't offer much protection at all because the way the chip's designed, it's always going to take the capacitor 2.78 above its maximum rated voltage of 2.7 volts because the hysteresis is above the detect voltage. So it's bad design. Now they could have fudged this by using 2.5 volt uh, chips, which would have detected uh, a voltage lower and therefore sort of almost within the 2.7 volts. But that would have just been a bodge. That's still bad design. This chip is not designed to protect against over voltage. And uh, a big thanks to Tengel Gear, who obviously spent quite a bit of time staring at the data sheet to work out that the chip was never designed for this particular job. Now, a couple of people also said uh, you spent too much time focusing on the protection circuits and not on what this capacitor module can actually do. So here I've soldered on an H4 car headlamp bulb, uh, 55 watts the main beam filament is, and we're just approaching 17 volts here, minus 0.8, so that's 16.2. So that's a fully charged module. Let's see how long it'll power this bulb. Not sure what that wisp of smoke is. Yeah, it powers it for a fair old time. It is getting dimmer because I can see my camera pulsing, which means it's adjusting its auto gain. You can see from the small bulb that that's getting quite dim now. So what have we had? About 10 seconds out of that. And the small bulb has almost gone completely out. The big bulb is getting very dim. So 15 to 20 seconds on a 55 watt car headlamp bulb. That's what that module can do. Cheerio.